The second week of my honeymoon in August 1977 was unusual in that Peter and I visited some favourite haunts to collect stamps and banknotes. Peter took me to Stanley Gibbons in central London. They had a banknote department and I asked if they had any errors. Upon being shown a pair of page signature one pound notes with different serials at six pound each, I quickly purchased them, especially as I noticed that they were replacements printed to replace an error and should have been perfect. We popped around the corner to Vera Trinder's, an accessories company, and purchased an album, albeit unbeknown to me, the album was made for postcards, had soft PVC pages, and you had to shove the banknote in via the end. Of course, I soon moved on to a better quality album, which was kinder to my banknotes. We strolled down to Spinks in King Street, where Barnaby Fall sold me a £1 Ford serial number error note for £6. Upon arriving home, I decided that I really needed the consecutively numbered banknote to go with it. Realising that having spent £24 on banknotes all in one day, I was totally spent up. Only a couple of months later, I joined the IBNS and attended a London branch meeting at the Victory Services Club in Seymour Street, Marble Arch, and was excited to find that they held an annual banknote show, but deflated when I found out it had already happened two weeks earlier. However, David Keeble and Enid Sorter ran a regular auction at the monthly meetings, and I was over the moon to purchase an early 10 shillings, this banknote, a concertina error, for £8.50. I had to empty all my pockets of my motorcycle leather jacket and jeans to find enough money to cover this huge expense and hoped I would not need any oil on the way home for my 175cc BSA two-stroke motorbike. In those heady early days of error collecting, we attended shows, events, auctions and club meetings. At one IBNS event, another error collector sold me a run of three £10 banknotes, which seemed very expensive, but in fact only the middle banknote had extra paper. To me it was logical, buy the three notes and have £20 back in my pocket to spend. In 1990, I prepared an exhibition of £5 error banknotes for the London IBNS annual show in Paddington. I had one space left, and only the day before the show, Barnaby Fall turned up trumps and sold me a new historical Gill £5 with different prefixes that had only been issued weeks earlier to complete my award-winning display. I enjoyed seeking out the error banknotes. There was no specific pricing strategy with dealers, a variety of errors to collect, and happily for me, not everyone liked the same errors. I have always believed that for every denomination, an error exists of every type, though some are much harder to find. I prefer extra paper missing print errors, but that has not stopped me from collecting all types. <clears throat> Some errors are only ever found in lesser condition, such as same serial number pairs, especially in the Britannia series. Even extra paper errors have to have a fold for the error to have been created. It is difficult to classify the full range of errors, but in broad terms, they can be divided into four categories. <clears throat> in English Paper Money 9th edition, we have given a range of classifications intended as a guide. Paper, printing, processing and numbering. 
Errors can be found with more than one of these categories. The most spectacular, spectacular are those that involve the corner of a sheet being folded over. A small section of the design can then be printed on the wrong side and when opened after guillotining shows a blank area one side and misplaced printing the other. In practice, there are dozens of minor variations which a specialist could tabulate using this guide. Firstly, paper. I will attempt to show errors in each six section listed. One, paper join. This portal's limited paper join was created when a full size reel of paper weighing tons will have had a number of paper joins diagonally across the surface. These lapped joins are marked in various ways, colored pens, colored tape, etc. As the join passes through the printing press, the pressure on the rollers, roller is momentarily released to let the join pass. The section of printed paper around the join should then be removed and destroyed. In this rare pair of paper join pound notes, the portal's limited hand stamp is over the printed banknote. Debden were the printers, so there is no logic to the hand stamp appearing over the print. Now these two share the same serial number, but a different prefix. And in the sketch below, we show where the banknotes would appear on the sheet. Prefix one to 84 over four sheets with the same serial. This sketch of a horizontal paper join, or this pound, this five pound, which bears the printing over the tape and should have been removed by the printers. Forty or misplaced thread, a striking thread error on this occasion. This 10 pound Kempfield is missing the thread completely. Paper crease in between the printing stages. Now this one does look perfect. However, the watermark should appear in the oval. On this particular 20 pound, the watermark is higher up and outside of its usual resting place. Of course, it's very difficult to show a watermark on a, on a scan. Secondly, printing. This leather 20 pound is a striking missing colors banknote. It should appear like this. <clears throat> On this 50 pound banknote, the silver foil of the rose is completely missing on the right hand side. And this is how it should appear. Missing signature. The serials and signatures are printed last, but here, one stage of the printing was omitted. 
the signature. Printed twice. It is likely here that the sheet was stuck and subsequently printed on a second time. Printed one side only, i.e. uniface. This Sir Isaac Newton found has no print on the reverse, which is rarely seen on an error of the smallest pound that we used to have. It is more common on the predecessor pound series C. Not a lot to see here. <laughs> Offset printing, mirror image. The sheet above has dried on the sheet below, providing a mirror image error. You can see at the top, the words Bank of England is in reverse. And other text is also printed um, by becoming an offset mirror image. A foreign body on or in a banknote. A piece of paper has stuck to the sheet during printing, causing the prefix and serial to be printed upon it. Design printing missing. This five pound EL01 was printed to replace an error, yet has a most spectacular error of its own. And this is how it should look. Misaligned colors or printing. The printing has gone completely out of registration, showing a white shadow where the Queen should have appeared. Quite a dramatic movement. Excess ink. Some ink runs are much more noticeable than others. Thirdly, processing. Extra paper. Extra paper errors are normally generated at the corner of a sheet. Misguillotined. The sheet has been guillotined incorrectly, creating a misaligned banknote. With knowledge of the series, we can conclusively state that this is not a created error from a sheet offered for sale. Finally, numbering. <clears throat> Identical prefix or serials on a pair of notes or a run. A line and key pair are the same prefix serial errors. This is an identical but different pair of serial errors.
top prefix different from the bottom or the side? Here we have HH and HD prefixes. This Ford 20 pound is missing the serials. They would normally appear here like this. Inverted or misplaced prefix or serials. The sheet of paper has been inserted incorrectly Thus, the prefix and serials are inverted. Excuse me. <clears throat> prefix or serials on reverse. The serials of this note appear on the reverse instead of the obverse, also inverted. one prefix or serial missing. The lower left prefix and serial were printed on the banknote when the paper was folded over during printing. Top serial different from bottom or side serial. Different serials on a replacement banknote. This £50 banknote seems to have gone through the numbering sequence twice. The first time it was printed as a column sort note, effectively taken out of the sheet and numbered, then accidentally put back, causing it to be renumbered with a totally different serial, prefix and serial. One prefix or serial partly missing or misaligned. A foreign body has prevented the serial number from being printed completely. As a Bank of England collector, I do find it quite exciting when an error turns up on a true first or true last prefix. Some errors defy belief and to me are spectacular. The following few slides fall into this category and are some of my favourites. This is how it would normally look. Oh, 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 sorry. Um, are you still sharing? Yeah. 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 You can okay. just go back to the slide, sorry. Okay, I'll carry on with this, sorry. Okay. Okay. This is how it should look. And how it should look.
This banknote has two errors, paper fold and extra paper with a, another paper fold. It's created a distortion on the banknote in shape. and a favourite of mine, a paper chair on the Queen's face. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> uh, I'll es escape. Okay. Um, any, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Pam. 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 Yes. Um, as you probably know, for U.S. banknotes, the, the most sought after and rarest errors of all are so-called inverted backs or double denomination notes. Mm. Uh, are, are any such any such things ever turned up for English banknotes? Um, actually, there has been. Now, hold on. You said an inverted reverse. Yeah, um, that's right. The back's upside down, or yeah. or the front's upside down. There yeah. is there is a pound note um, that I have that has an inverted reverse, um, which is unbelievable considering it should never really happen. Um, the catch twenty two is, of course, when you show the back of it, it looks normal, but it's just the wrong way round. Um, <laughs> it's inverted. Um, we really. I would have said that's probably the only time I've seen an inverted reverse, um, i.e. the whole of the back is upside down. And that's on a one pound C-series note. I do have one. Yeah, that's, again, that's that's a that's a much sought out note in the US currency. But of course, the Crame Dollar Crame are do, double denomination notes. Like a five pound note on the front and the back is a 10 pound note. Uh, that would seem virtually impossible to ha happen, but it does happen occasionally with U.S. notes, at least in the past. All right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, um, yes. So, um, what is if you have, have you ever come across an error in circulation, and what's the most incredible one you found? If you did find one in circulation, that's right. one thing I'd like to find. Right, very difficult to hear. I think you said, have I found one in circulation? Um, and if so, what have you found uh, an incredible one um, in, in circulation? Because I've only well, found I, I think at the last bit. Um, Did you find only... an incredible one in circulation? No. no. Um, the only thing I did find was when you could get pound notes out of the cash machine, and that's how long ago it was. Um, the Sir Isaac Newton pound with a little half moon on it. Um, so in other words, something had got in the way and created a half moon uh, on a little run of uh, one pound notes. Uh, that's the only um, that's the only one I can remember actually ever finding. Um, so when you see things on a certain online auction house and they say, uh, you know these polymer ones spectacular missing ink and all that and then you find they've got you know they've sold 10 of them the chances in your lifetime in my opinion uh, would be you would be lucky to find an error in your lifetime in circulation and notice it etc um you know maybe you find two in your lifetime but you wouldn't find 10 or 20 it, it <laughs> just it, it, that would define mass belief. production and, errors so, okay. I can show a few of Orrington's artificial <laughs> errors if you want to see them. Um, yeah, the only, yeah, the only difference there is that he created them. <laughs> yeah, I think um, mostly. Uh, there was a question from Rukmini, I think. Um, yes. Can you buy these from the printers? No, absolutely not. <laughs> no, never, no way. 
Um, the Bank of England, I would have said, would generally pride itself on the being a great institution and providing quality products, um, i.e. their banknotes, not coins, because they're banknotes. Um, however, it's um, it's sort of, there's a word for it, but um, it's like take it, taking a pop at the Bank of England that shows with a collection like mine that errors have happened. They are known. It's not a, not a big secret. Um, but error collecting is a very, um, uh, it's, it's down to the individual as to what something is worth or what they're interested in. Uh, that can differ quite dramatically. So it's not how much you pay. It's the finding things. It's the seeking them out. Um, I have written an article in the Ibanez Journal, which I think I updated um, a little while ago. Um, I don't know if, if Alexander's Court's received my latest one, but it's an update of one that I'd written a long time ago. Um, but I, I, although I collect errors, I actually also collect Bank of England. So it's a, it's a, it was a sideline really to collecting because I actually started collecting Bank of England in 1975, but only errors in as of 1977. So. Is it? true um i hear stories is it true that some of these errors not come out the usual way of circulation but through people who work at these institutions um i've heard in the past by some people is that any truth into it i would have said 101 percent errors bank of england error notes have not come out via institutions the only thing that happened um, some but years I mean, ago. I walking out with them. I mean, um, yeah, sorry, Pam. Sorry. Yeah, the only thing that happened some years ago, um, probably before you were born, actually, um, were the Somerset five pound notes uh, without the signature, which is in our book at B343A. Um, people were getting these five pound notes that didn't have signatures on them uh, out of cash machines. So, they quickly, you know, people realised that they could go to somewhere like Stanley Gibbons in those days. And Stanley Gibbons were stunned to find that there was this amazing error that had happened and were offering sort of, a, you know, a hundred pounds, you know, a huge sum of money because somebody walked in with one. Then somebody else walked in with 10. Then somebody else walked in with 20. Then somebody else walked in with another 20. And suddenly the price went down and down and down as they realised um, that uh, in fact it wasn't a unique error the first person did very well out of it because a hundred pound was a lot of money then in the 80s um so that's the only one where there's been a quantity that can be defined by the serial numbers and uh, the prefix and serial numbers now with all the research that's been done on it so um but generally things don't walk out of institutions because basically you'd be walking out of your job mm -hmm. Pam, do you think that your little baby there of collecting errors will die out because of the new polymer and, and better uh, quality control? There certainly is better quality control. And um, I certainly believe that genuine error collecting will cease as of polymer errors for the Bank of England. Um, I would have said there might still be some errors occurring in polymer notes with some countries that their quality control perhaps isn't as strong. Um, so it's not impossible to find. I think there was an African country, I can't remember which one it was, where there were some um, the serial numbers were, were out of sync. Um, I, I think it'd be difficult to find extra polymer, as it were, um, on a bank note. I think that would be the highlight of any error collector's dream um, on a polymer banknote. Um, but logically, the cutting machine shouldn't really allow for anything like that to happen, logically. Yeah, it's all it's, because it's computerised and that so much now, isn't it? Yes, yes. Um, I have seen one or two genuine errors on polymer notes. Uh, but they were really, one was like an embossed numbering where it obviously the machine had stamped, maybe the note had slipped. And there was one I saw which I believed was genuine. Um, and they're the only two notes I've seen. Mm -hmm. Everything else, unfortunately, um, I'm not, I, you know, certainly if you listen to Stan A, 
you'd understand the processes that they've gone through to find that it's basically impossible to have the whole of um you know the ink to be all missing yeah simply yeah uh, Pam. Yeah, one more quick question, Pam. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It was really unique and interesting. Um, you know, the latest, uh, I don't know if it's the latest or the previous series, the 50 Australian dollar note that claimed to have an error. Now, was that, what is your personal opinion? Was that a genuine error or was it, uh, you know, kind of a counterfeiting uh, security no, technique? No, no. That, uh, it was it, genuine. Yeah, it was a genuine yeah. error. Okay. Um, and the Bank of England, funny enough, um, some years ago, they produced a £10 note and they unfortunately put the governor and the company of the Bank of England, and we call it that, the three thes, whereas it should have been the governor and company of the Bank of England, which is only two thes. When they realised their mistake, they told everybody, but the notes were already in circulation. So they then become not an error, but basically an issued banknote. The spelling error on the $50 uh, should never have happened. And I would have said anybody who got one will be over the moon that they picked up an error. Um, and that is a genuine error and it's a circulating error. So um, I certainly believe it was a, a, it's an accident. You know, somebody's not spelt something correctly. And it, it was very, it was micro printing as well, wasn't it? Hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, Obviously, somebody wasn't didn't have their magnifying glass out properly. <laughs> Sorry, Jonathan said something. Yeah, Pam, um, I've got a, an image of a Bank of Ireland polymer uh, ten pound note, which is uh, a cutting error. It, again, the paper or of well, the polymer substrate got a big fold in it, and um, and so the uh, the note has come out as an error. Um, but I haven't seen any others um, of any um, issuer. Have you seen anything like that? Um, the only thing I saw was there was a hundred pound Scottish note. Sorry, no, that was a paper note. Sorry, that was a paper one. Um, uh, I saw some, I suppose you'd call them like striations on the five pound Clydesdale, but trying to tell somebody that's an error when you can, you can hardly see it and you need a, the case 22 you need a real note a genuine note original to see what the error is because without seeing the original you wouldn't know um, yeah. i do believe certainly the note that you will have seen or have um it's a great error to find um and that really should be about the best you can hope for in an error on a polymer note where the paper might have got stuck and you might get maybe a paper crease um but it would have to remain stuck in that folded position for it to have been issued because if it had enlarged during the printing and opened up then that might have got caught out by the machine yeah yeah i mean i can imagine how it was created with probably the same way that the paper ones are done but i've never seen it on a polymer note no. i just wonder whether you come across any polymer. i can show the image if you're interested i, yeah. I can yeah. if you want me to share the screen i can just show it now yeah yeah. Okay. Um, right, there it is. Oh, yeah. Wow. It, wow. Fabulous. Yeah, that's quite something, isn't it? And again, yeah. that would have been the bottom of the sheet, logically. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the number is a you know it's not a round number at all. But anyway, it's quite something, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yes, it must be the bottom of the sheet. Yes. So, yeah. as I said earlier, the extra paper on a polymer is you know that would be the the highlight of any error collector um, to find. Yeah. yeah, amazing. But it has to have come really from the bottom of the sheet. That has to have been folded underneath. And when they when the machines check in the sheets, because the 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 image below would have been perfect, and these are you know, microns uh, thin. It's seen the next note, and that's how it's managed to pass through, probably. So. Yeah, it's quite something anyway. I just thought you'd be interested in that. Yeah, um, that's fabulous. If we got room, Pam, we might even stick it in uh, Paper Money of Ireland, second edition. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> so uh, I think that's um, everything. Uh, oh. There was a question. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Charles. Yeah. Did you notice with the with the five pound note with the serial numbers on the reverse that the prefix was the two prefixes were different? Uh, yes, because when it's gone through the machine, the sheet has slipped and it's got the one of the next the next note to it. So, yeah, these yeah. things do happen. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> uh, it was A11 and A06 or something, I think. Something no, like I think that. it was 10 and 11, I think yeah. it was. Um, some sheets, um, depending on when the printing happens, sometimes the sheet has the same prefix but different serials sometimes the serial number changes um on the pound notes it was like that where the pound the serial numbers changed so it depends on what printing process they were doing at the time so yeah yeah so, pam. okay pam um yes. one thing i was going to sort of say was about the polymer errors um i i've I mentioned to one of the London branch meetings in the past, I found a 10 that's a very minute error, but like a sort of double printing on the, the Jane Austen 10. But I noticed you said you've got a, a printed error. You showed it to a society of the Turner um, reverse. Of, um, of it. it was a printing error. I didn't, I didn't have, unfortunately, much time to see it because I was... Yeah, I, um, I think I showed it to the club. That wasn't the error I was referring to. Oh. With until I show it to Stan, eh, which I will do one day when I see him, mm -hmm. um, it looks like an error to me. Um, but I'd like Stan to have a look at it first. Um, I wouldn't like to declare I actually own a genuine error until it's been authenticated you know, until he sorts it out for me. But uh, just finding something, I think as I was sitting here one day, we were going through some new five pound polymers. And I suddenly I noticed there was an extra little blob of ink on one. I thought, wow, I found an error. <laughs> so, yeah. All excited. Um, but um, I think with the care they're taking and the technology they're using, the errors mm. on polymer notes for Bank of England will certainly be far more limited than paper. So I'm glad I've got what I've got. Um, I'm happy with what I've got. Um, what's your most spectacular piece? Like, if you had to keep one of the areas you've got, and that might be very difficult, but if there was one piece you would like to keep, which is your piece in the collection. Oh, yes, then. the resistance. Um, I'm afraid I can't really choose. Um, I mean, although it was a talk on Bank of England errors, the final slide showed some of my favourites, which included a treasury error. Um, oh. And that would have been chucked out as printer's waste. It should never have um, got out. Um, I think for me, as an error collector and a prefix collector, a true last prefix that has an error on it, which is substantial and can be seen, um, that, that to me is quite interesting. But I've also believed that sometimes if you find an error on a last prefix, it, and the prefix does not end, say, Z99, might end T20, that might be the reason they ended. <laughs> because they were making so many mistakes. But that's what I'd like to think anyway. So anyway, I think that's uh, everyone and everything. Um, Hello, this is Philip. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. hi. Yes. Okay, hi. Uh, let me just turn my camera. So I hope you can hear and see me. Hi. <laughs> uh, okay, yes. Okay, uh, first of all, thanks a lot for this great pres uh, presentation, which I appreciated a lot, actually, um, because, um, well, especially because um, error bank notes is one main focus of my collection. Oh. And, well, as m some of you may know, my main focus is Brazil. Um, also, sometimes um, within the WhatsApp group, I share some images of Brazilian errors and so on. Um, so, um, yeah, and actually this was really interesting that many of those errors that you showed in your presentation, you will also find on Brazilian banknotes. And yes. um, something that really fascinates me about um, error banknotes is actually not just only the result that you put into your album, but also this whole production process, what is behind it, um, and to see what may go wrong in which exact step and so on. So, um, yeah, I always appreciate putting new um, error banknotes into my collection and I always analyze them to find out what exactly happened. 
And sometimes I also come about um, come across some forgeries where you can clearly see that this doesn't make sense. So um, this yeah was a forged error, nothing authentic. And um, one time actually, I purchased a um, ten pound um, Bank of England banknote with some um, missing um, print on the front side. And I also analyzed it and I came to the conclusion the, that it is a forgery. So I returned it because there were really suspect uh, hairlines, there were some remaining ink parts and so on. And so my question, um, is it quite common for you to come across error forgeries? Mm. Um, it is with the polymer notes, <laughs> um, the current polymer notes. Um, <clears throat> with the Bank of England error notes, um, I did once my heady young days, um, I bought a one pound uniface banknote and I went back to show someone else. I was quite, you know, look what I found type thing. And um, I found that it was a threaded banknote, but the thread was missing, which means the paper had been split. And I took it back and got my money back. So you really have to so you have to know your notes to know what you're buying. Um, uh, I think also that um, this is why it's very good to, to um, know what prefixes exist on maybe uncut sheets so you don't buy a, a spectacular error and then find out it's been created. But forgeries of errors, I think... Even even on the uncut sheets, I don't think I've seen more than one or two created errors. And um, we quickly tell the auction house and they'll withdraw, generally an auction house, and they'll withdraw them. They're quite good about it once they realise, because they don't want to fool people either. Um, so I think uh, it's good to know what prefixes exist. And I, I don't genuinely think that I've ever found, apart from that one pound, any other errors that have been created that the splitting of a banknote paper is quite interesting as a, yeah, as a fun thing to try and do in your spare time. <laughs> absolutely. So um, actually, what was the result of that, like the forgery error that you had in hand? Um, was there some strange texture to it? I mean, um, I imagine if you split it, maybe you glue or however you put this again together, it may totally like the, the feeling, uh, the touch, the thickness might be quite different uh, from a normal note, no? Um, well, if you, the, the catch-22, if you are just picking up one bank note and somebody tells you this is an error and you look at it, you have nothing to compare it with. So I always, so when I went away with it, I was still in the same hall. I hadn't left the hall um, and I showed it to somebody else and they said to me, has it got a thread? And I thought, oh, I never thought about that at all. And of course, I was, it was a long time ago. It was, a, it was over 30 years ago. And uh, I, I took it back. Um, nowadays, I think I would recognise whether it was a genuine uniface error or not. Um, there have been uniface errors of the Britannia series. So the Marn pound type note and 10 bob and the Mo 10 bob. Um, the, they would be, they don't, they wouldn't be thinner but the back is just not printed. But if you try to show it, it's like that one I've shown, the Sir Isaac Newton one. At one time, I did own all these, but as Peter, who's a, who is a flatterist, would say, well, you can't see anything. There's nothing there. It's uniface. So um, they're not things I actually kept. But the Sir Isaac Newton one, there's a little bit of ink on there. Um, so I appreciate the bit of ink being there. Um, but I think you also want to see... You, to buy an error note, you really want to know, as you look at it, you should be able to see that it's an error. Now, obviously, if it's a serial number error, it might take a little bit longer. But if somebody says, you know, like I had once, somebody called me and said, I found an error on the pound note. And I said, what is it? And he said, the queen has got an extra eyelash. <laughs> so I said, well, I think you ought to keep that one. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean with analyzing the whole production process and if something really makes sense. So, um, yeah, thanks again um, a lot. And yeah, for this great presentation, which I really, I loved it. <laughs> well, I, I think I think that will do for everybody going on now. But uh, I would like to say, I'm sorry I couldn't have been here all day. When I chose the date for this event, there were no shows planned. 
and the show that happened today was moved from June and I was really in a quandary so I was uh, really pleased that Jonathan um, could stand in and introduce the speakers and I'd like to, to thank him um, and the team, you know, Robin Hill and, and Gareth Thomas and uh, Chris Neald for helping get all this together. Um, but really, mainly thank you to the, the speakers. Um, I did see some of them. Um, and so thank you to our speakers, Colin. I think you might have gone to bed now. I don't know. Colin, Stanley, uh, Jonathan, uh, Alan, Marianne and Richard. Um, you really helped make it a, a great day and a great event for the IBNS London branch and the IBNS altogether. So thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you've enjoyed yourself today. And um, uh, we hope to see you soon, probably on one of the London meetings. Um, but thank you, everybody. And take care. Keep safe. And we hope one day we can all meet up. So thank you, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, it's double wave, really? double wave. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.